This is Dr. Brian Burton from Burton's Media Group. Today in Learning Lua, we're going to examine variable types. We have eight default variable types built into Lua, being nil, number, string, boolean, table, function, user data, and thread. It should be noted that Lua is a dynamically typed language. In other words, you don't have to explicitly declare a variable type when creating your variables. You just simply declare your variable and it'll automatically type the variable to the correct type. Nil is the default variable type in Lua. All variables when they are created until they are given a value are by default a nil value. Nil is also used to clear variables or make them available for garbage collection to free up memory. So if you're done using a variable inside a programming project, you can set it to nil to remove it from memory. So here's a simple example. Um, I've used a very original variable name called my variable and set that equal to nil. Now in the program this sets it automatically to nothing. If I want to check on what type a variable is I can use the type command so print type and as you can see my type is nil for this particular variable because it has not been initially declared for any other variable type. The number data type is used to store all numeric values. It is a double precision floating point real number for storage that includes for all types, including what we would normally consider for an integer or other data precision types for numeric values. Internally, Lua stores it all as a 64-bit double precision floating point number. So here we've created my integer another very original variable name, and we're storing the value 10 in it. If I wanted to output that, I can of course do a print, and we see the value 10. If you want to see what the type is, see that it is being output as a number variable type. Of course, this also applies to floating point variables. We can easily declare a floating point variable, output the results, and double check the type, which would again show that it is just simply a number type. String is a more complex variable type. It is just storing a sequence of characters. They can be declared or delimited with either a single or a double quote, or you can create a multi-line string using the square brackets. I'm going to devote a special lesson just to strings so that we can cover all the cool functionality that is built into them. Strings do have their own styles as well as escape characters that are available to us through Lua that make developing functionality very useful, especially when you get into using it with Corona and other tool sets. Here we have an example of using a double quote to create a string variable. Again, we're printing that out if you want to see the type. It does automatically declare it as a string type. If you want to, to create multi-line, here I created a multi-line string and print it out. As you can see, quotation marks are or and single quotes are not required when you're using the double bracket for delineating strings using the block characters. The Boolean variable type is stored used to store both true and false values. Booleans do work a little bit differently in the Lua language. We're not limited to just true or false values to represent or output the meaning of Boolean. Uh, nil is also would return a false as well as or that it has no value. You should also note that Booleans, when they are being evaluated, such as in a if-then structure or a while loop or something like that, anywhere where you might be evaluating it, we'll talk about that in a later lesson as well, anywhere where a Boolean is being evaluated, if it contains value or and is not false, then it is considered a true value. So zero will be evaluated to a true condition. Also note that an empty string, which in some programming languages evaluates to a false situation, evaluates to true because it does ha contain value. So consider in Lua that a false condition in Lua means that the variable does not ha contain value or it contains the value of false. And that automatically delineates it as a Boolean value. When you're using Booleans or checking for value inside the Lua language, always remember that false may mean that it just simply has no value. 
So I've created three Boolean situations. I've got my boo, my boo two, and my boo three. True, I set my boo to true, my boo two is set to false, and my boo three is set to nil. In the first situation, we can print my boo, and we get the output of true, and we do a type check, it is set to Boolean. So let's take a look at two. Again, outputs to false, still Boolean, and let's check for the third type. And for the third type, it does evaluate to nil, as well as the type is also evaluating to nil. But as I said, if you're doing an evaluation, such as an if-then or comparison operation, if the variable is a nil, that will evaluate as a false situation during the evaluation. Tables are a very powerful and useful tool inside of the Lua scripting language. They do store the data as an associative array. This is a non-typed array, meaning that it can store strings next to integers, next to reals, next to booleans. It doesn't make any difference. They can be indexed by any other variable type inside the system. So if you want to create your index based upon strings or numbers, it allows you to do either. To create an array, you use the curly brackets to delineate it. There we have it. As I said, you can use any type for your indexing, or as I mentioned, arrays inside of the Lua scripting language are non-typed, so we can have a string next to a number next to another string. This is a very common situation. Outputting data from your array can be a little bit more tricky. The most common, one of the more common errors I see students make when beginning programming using the Lua scripting language, usually that's within the Corona SDK, they will try and output information directly from a table rather than looking at the individual components of that table. So if you do a print my array, you will get an output such as table information associated with that array. Let's very quickly look at how we can get information out of a table so that it is useful to you. The easiest way to get your data back out of the array is that you can directly index the object type. So in this case, if I wanted to list the first object, which is a string, I can just simply in brackets place one and that will return the first object in the array. It should be noted that arrays start counting at the value of one. Many programming languages start at zero. In Lua, we start at one. So my array index one will return string just as my array index 4 will return the value of 14, and my array index 2 will return the value of 12. The last three variable types we'll go into for in further depth in later lessons, but for now I'm just going to explain what they are. The function variable type allows us to assign a full function program segment to a variable. Since Lua is capable of storing functions as a variable type, it gives us a great deal of flexibility and dynamic programming capabilities within our code. We'll cover functions in greater depth in a later lesson. The last two data types are user data and threads. Again, we'll cover these in later lessons. These are much more complex concepts. The user data allows us to represent new data types and be able to store that in our variable type. Threading allows us to be able to store a coroutine instance inside of a variable. In other words, it allows us to do multitask threading and be able to store those threads inside of a variable type. We have a lot more tutorials and lessons forthcoming. If you'd like to follow what's happening, you can follow us on Twitter at Dr. Brian Burton or Facebook at Burton's Media Group, or follow us on our website, burtonsmediagroup.com. If you'd like notification through YouTube, hit the like or subscribe button. 